Hello, everyone. Welcome. We're going to open up this meeting. Uh, this is the Central Business Architecture Committee meeting. Uh, we are in hearing room 18 at 210 Main Street. Um, we have one item on the agenda, which is the review of demolition and reconstruction of a three-story residential building at 72 Masonic Street, Northampton, map ID 31D-124. Before we get started, um, I'm going to open up for any public comment that does not have to do with this presentation. Is there anyone here for that? Then we will move on and ask for the applicant to introduce themselves and present the comment. Hello, I'm Robert Gale. I am a senior designer at Berkshire Design. And I'm here with Carrie Partini, who is also architect and principal of Berkshire I'm, Design. I'm really sorry, but I'm going deaf. And I, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm still having trouble hearing you. So I'm if sorry. If you can speak up a little bit, I'd appreciate it. Robert Beal, I'm with Berkshire Design. Um, senior designer, and I'm here with Carrie Bartini, who is architect and principal of Berkshire Design. And I'm just going to start diving in to give a little explanation about the project. First off, I don't know if you guys, if you have the drawing set with you, mm -hmm. or if you would like any other reading materials. Well, I'll, I'll take one if you've got one. I, I, I looked at it online, but I didn't print it out. Sure, that's good thing for me. Just you know, Thank you. So just a little bit about the project itself. Um, location of 72 Masonic Street in terms of the architectural business district where it's generally located. Um, a little more about the property itself. This is our site right here. And basically, uh, about the project, it's a existing two and a half story structure currently used um, for office use. And the goal was to basically tear down, including the foundation, build a new three story structure, um, residential condo unit, three units in total, one per floor. And um, basically, bring some new life into the neighborhood, trying to uh, keep it in context to the neighborhood and not go out on a limb, so to say. <laughs> so, let's see here. Just Before you go off of oh, that oh, slide, sorry. can you just orient us? Um, oh, yes. Everyone here is not an architect. And so, the street is. Masonic Street is on the bottom here. Our site is located set back off of a what do you call it? Uh, right away. Mm -hmm. It's behind Bell. Yeah, behind Bell the restaurant, which is located right here. There's also, if you need it, I pulled up the Google Maps on the other tab. So if you needed to go back and forth at that any point, and you can do Street View as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> Perfect. That's cool. That's very cool. <laughs> There's our building. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good reference. So, looking more again at the existing conditions here. Um, the existing house, very traditional New England style. Um, farmhouse, so to say. Um, I mean, there's, there's not too much that's, I'm not going to take historic about it, because it's, it doesn't have any historic significance, but it, this is very, it's a very run of the vanilla type structure, no big significance. So I, those are our current four elevations. And, uh, Again, just a little more about the site, its location, and the surrounding, the context, the other buildings that are currently around it. Um, as you, you can see here, there is some newer construction that's been done within the past. I'm not sure exactly how many years, but you can tell more recent. Um, I can't hear you again. You, oh, I'm sorry. sorry. These these slides basically represent current look, the context, the different structures that are currently. You're writing structures. 
Yes, the abutting structures. Um, and as you can see, some newer styles, still though with traditional elements and such. So we just wanted to get an understanding of what was basically around. This slide we just put in to show all different types of um, architectural elements that are within the business district. Just to use as examples of other elements that we brought forth on our design for our new structure. Um, as you can see, a lot, it very, a lot of traditional elements, small town vernacular, um, very pedestrian scaled, and a lot of visually appealing elements. And that was something that we wanted to capture in the design for the new structure. So moving on to the new proposed structure. We have, again, three-story condo unit. Um, the proposed also has three parking spaces, one to go with each unit. Um, and basically, our newer structure is using a lot of those elements that are in the current area to um, basically bring a little more life into the into the site. As you can see, there are some newer structures, and we kind of play with, with those same elements from some of those buildings, so it didn't feel like it was totally out of place. Now, tie in old and new. Um, and a little more, some computer generated drawings for the proposed building. As you can see, you know, it's simple, neat, but still is not edgy or it doesn't not fit in with the, with the existing neighborhood. Um, and excuse me, oh, yes. just could you slide yep. back there? Yes, yes. Um, you noted, noted entry and street elevations. Could you kind of give us a perspective of what you call like which stations the Sonic Street versus like the state's okay. uh, center street side? The entry elevation is basically off the the public act, the, the private access off of the Sonic Street. Easement there. That easement, right. yes, okay. that right away. The street elevation is the side facing Masonic Street. So this is the side behind Bella. Thank you. And from there, basically, it goes into the, the drawings that you have seen. Basically, this set here. We've I've just included um, plans and elevations and, and whatnot. And I can go through these with you, or you know, can, if you have any questions up to this point um, on the drawings which you've already seen, or I don't know if you want me to take it step by step and go through all the We're mostly buildings. concerned with the exterior of the building, so you don't have to walk us through the interior. Oh, so well, you finish that, if you finish showing us everything on the outside. Well, I mean, we, there are, as you've seen from the other drawings, we have the, the exterior drawings included, but I just wanted to, you know, touch base with the, the renderings and stuff like that, so mm -hmm. we can get a better understanding. Um, I forgot my cheat sheets. Do I open it to the public board and the well, first? Um, probably the board. Okay. Let's see if there are any questions. Okay. Are there any questions from the board? Um, well, what are the siding materials and what what is like you know, like the fascia or the material below the cornice, that band that you have running horizontally above? And everything on the exterior is all uh, composite wood material. Uh, kind of a hardy material, hardy plank, hardy be, siding. Okay, so it's it's a collaborative siding. It's, it's a, a hard, it's a collaborative uh, flat side. Yes, a right. collaborative fiber um, cement. Yeah. Correct. But that band that runs above the band too is all is, is all trim and like vertical cement siding. It's okay. the the whole exterior was specified to be all low maintenance um, composite siding. That isn't vinyl. 
We should add that. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah sorry. And the windows? The windows um, currently are all specified as wood um, clad um, Anderson windows. Aluminum clad? Final clad. Ah, uh, this is uh, like a compartment, it's a proprietary part of this. And the colors are what you've indicated, kind of the two color scheme trim. Uh, and yeah, two color, color scheme, um, we were going, you know, kind of that safety green and cream mm -hmm. look for now, with a, I believe it was drawn with some accents of, you know, Eggplant on the door. <laughs> <laughs> so the water table trim is about 12 inches. I was wondering if the upper bands and the cornices are the same width. Uh, it just wasn't uh, noted. Uh, oh, it's not on the drawings? Mm -hmm. Oh. Okay. It looks pretty. It, it's pretty substantial. Um, exactly. I would say that this, the to the drawings of the user. Yeah, if there's scale drawings, then I'm sure it's 12 inches also. Yeah, yeah there's still drawings. drawings. And I don't have the scale, of course. Yeah, these two bands are, these two are it's similar. Um, and then there is, of course, the upper banding, which is, you know, all um, compiled together pieces to make up a bigger. But, um, yeah, it does appear it's a little bit, even a little bit larger okay and then do you know the um siding width the exposure yeah, um, exactly. the exposure uh it appears i believe it's six, six. Mm -hmm. uh, for the exposure well are you sure that i mean i mean hardy comes in multiple exposure or uh, but I, I tend to think like a four inch is a more traditional clapboard look. Uh, uh, uh. Four inch is a traditional vinyl siding look. <laughs> well, <laughs> which it's we, also a traditional cedar siding look. We, we tend to try and stay away from that four inch look. Um, it, it starts to, um, proportionately, it starts to change the feel of the building. So generally, we try and stick with six inches. Well, also, too, with a, a three story structure, that starts to be a lot of horizontal. Yeah and it starts to get heavy so by spreading them out a little more tends to help someone um what are the the railings and the columns is that also the columns were built of columns um all of wood and composite materials um and the, the railings were all going to be composite material as well for ease of maintenance and um, durability. durability with paint and whatnot. Um, and then you don't show me, oh yes, you have the mechanical space down in the basement, so you're not gonna have any rooftop units? Uh, um, rooftop units in terms of, oh, like- Air conditioning, where the compressor's gonna be? Yeah, I don't know if you have the- We haven't located the condenser yet. Yeah. So we'll be working with the mechanical just to determine in the site, in the civil, you know, the arborist, just to make sure that we place the unit where it should go. Um, we're still trying to figure out the exact materials. We're trying to get as much grass as we can in the area. So that'll sort of determine where we end up putting the condenser unit. But it'll be on the ground, not the we, we were trying to avoid the roof, yes. We're trying to go for the ground. Are you using like split units there or that isn't a very much traditional? Ducted systems. So right now it would be traditional ducted systems. Yeah, each um, each unit actually has its own mechanical space in right. the unit for mm -hmm. for its mechanical. Sorry, I missed that. Uh, each unit has its own mechanical space in the unit itself. And it looks like you have a parapet. Yes. So you could potentially, if you put something on the roof, you might. They'll be hidden. Yes, yes. There is a fairly good size parapet. We're trying to roof mount as little as possible just to give us more flexibility um, for the solar ability later on. Okay, okay. Well, it appears in the plot plan you probably have enough room on ground to do those. 
condensers or compressors. Correct. With Correct. Some, I assume you might do some shielding around it just to make them. Oh yes, yes, and that will be noticeable. We'll be working with. Yeah. And it'll be similar to the trash enclosure that you can see there. Right. <clears throat> Same type of feel and look of materials. What do the other two elevations look like? This is again the this is the street side facing the Sonic behind Bella, and this is the side facing the lot, which is off at Center Street, State Street. State Street. No, Center Street. It is Center, Center Street. Street. Yeah. Behind State Street Market. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm Tom Douglas, I live in Montana, I'm going to do a four four process room. Are you right up against the property lines with us? It is, it's within a few feet. The reason I was asking is because, um, you know, I dealt with this, I'm an architect as well. I just came because I designed a couple buildings nearby, which is curious, but, but um, I know if you're less than three feet. They lack the wall ratio. Yeah. It has been calculated. Okay. Well, yeah. less than three feet is like. No, no, it, we're right at, we're right at three feet. Oh, okay. And yeah. the, yeah, the property line's actually at an angle to the building, or the oh. building's at an angle yeah. to the property line. So, so as we, yeah, but it, all the calculations have been done for okay. the, yeah, the it's last long ratio. Yeah, it's always a shame the wall. And the yeah, having a compromise, yes. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and exactly <laughs> the, the location of this building had to shift in a couple of different areas to find the right. Oh, that's nice. So, to stay within the required setbacks. Okay. So, is that, I'm sorry, is that why the, the facade that's facing the street, which is probably the most visible, has few, it feels like the ratio of solid to void is more solid than, than void, or it's not as balanced? Is that why? Um, that way, or is it more? the interior layout it, the, on that side it was more the the interior um there so it, on the right hand side are the bedrooms yeah mm -hmm. so we want to add some level of but also too that is right behind bella and the restaurant next door it's yeah. pretty much we'll secured say. except for the third floor i would think correct correct and you know there is the restaurant does have the outdoor patio and everything on the rear so it kind of was the whole you know working between the two for privacy for both properties in a way and also to um having um there is patio or deck space in, in that location as well yeah. um so the, the, it kind of was a trade-off on that elevation the, balancing it. act well <laughs> yeah because i mean the parking lot is here and so it was and then on the other side we have the views are great the, the views all, uh, you know are all around you know you're looking at how the other structures or parking lot so it kind of was the lesser of two evils which side are you going to have some exterior space on so that was that was the winner <laughs> and so which elevation is facing the state street parking lot this, or the center street part that of that picture represents that upper Actually, that picture represents that as well. Uh, go, you can hit the back arrow up in the upper left of the map. No, down. Uh, just right below oh. that big. No, no, no. See the black box in the upper left corner? And the little arrow. Uh, that should take you back to the map here. Sorry. Let's see. Go back to the map. I think if you just zoom out, it'll eventually go back. That's what I do. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's true. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying it's pretty basic. Yeah. Yeah. It's really tough to win over. <clears throat> there you go. I'm sure this one's going to be one. Oh. <laughs> 
Well, it won't zoom in any, anymore, but the current structure is right here. This is where the mm -hmm. in the back is facing oh, that part. So you can't there. see it from State Street at all. Well, there's the 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 center center street. Oh, you can. Okay. Yeah. So if you zoom down the center street, it'll put you and turn around. Yeah, right there. Yeah, is that where your finger, your uh, index finger, is that center street? Right? Yeah, turn it now. It rotate it right. Ex exactly. Oh, yeah, okay. Right. So I've been saying, see, I got it. Uh, yeah. Locations right there. So um, that's a perfect segue with this. What I wanted to mention is exactly about this, and everything you guys it seems to follow the um, guidelines to a T. And then what I'm looking at it's going. It's a little bit of a stretch because this is um, this is a tra transitional residential classification, and then. Um, it talks about horizontal window groups. They, they reference historical buildings. They say try to stay within adjacent historical buildings. And then it goes, the only part that they talk about historical window arrangements is under the theme, the theme guidelines. So then it, it breaks it down talking about um, window groupings. And so you mentioned the percentages. And I mean, is there anything that we could do? Because then it goes back to this other thing where it says if, if the heights are greater than the width, or vice versa, if the width is greater than the height, then you have to add course, uh, vertical banding. And then it's, and then I'm thinking, you know, what it's conversely, because it's, you, you have a 38 foot width building and a 40 foot tall and it's 40 feet tall so do we add incorporate horizontal you know, I break up the minimum. I think what's unusual about this building and my understanding of the intent of the guidelines is about what is visible from the street but specifically that part of the guidelines is about buildings that are on the street edge um, and this this building can be seen from two different streets. However, if somebody built up where the State Street parking lot is currently a building, you would not you you wouldn't see that facade. Um, it is it's a building in the middle of the block. Really, it's not on the edge. Um, so it doesn't fit into the guidelines. Okay. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, right. I, I think the. Uh, you know, because of the parapet or the or the, the roof overhang and that wide bend at the top mm -hmm. and then that horizontal element below that, I think it tends to change the proportions to go when we look at it. You know, I think it tends to make it, it reduces the height book as much. I think it spreads it out. And I but, think your your concern is this particular elevation that's facing onto that parking lot because there's mm -hmm. not as much detail mm -hmm. on it. Um, but I think also just to piggyback on what um, Alon was referring to is I think the fact that it's so far set back from any of those street facades, it really is a different, you have a different evaluation standard, okay. um, not only because buildings could be built in front of it, but also the presence on the street isn't as pronounced as it, um, as it might otherwise be. If you were building that right on the street, mm -hmm. that would probably have, you would probably have a different evaluation of that. Yeah, if, if, if this was the facade on the street, that would not work out. <laughs> <laughs> um, any other comments or questions from the board before we open it to the public? Any public comments on this project? A couple more questions. <laughs> um, you, you have a little bit of concrete showing below your water table, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. And so you set the first floor up. You go up a few steps. Yes. Uh, okay. A few steps up. So, and your water table is like twelve inches tall. Is that what you're saying? It's it's in the, the ten to twelve inch oh, okay. range. Okay. Um, I was just wondering, how big is your corner board? Corner board, I think it is. You probably pull up those plants easier. I'm not 
I was just thinking a lot of the historic buildings around have, you know, bigger corner boards, the more Greek revival ones, they're much more pronounced. You know. Yeah, so these are definitely not the width of Greek revival, you're correct, but we, we tend to do, you know, a minimum of uh, I would, say, I would say that's a bit, that would be yeah. smaller than that. No. It could, I'm not sure if it, probably yeah, it, it, it's probably. Yeah, it's probably. It's at least, at least a six inch minimum. So, so it would be a one by six. six inch. It looks like it's the same width as the second as the horizontal side. I mean, and we can bump that up to a, you know, an eight inch. I mean, it doesn't, it won't impede on any stuff around. There's, it won't be bumping into any door door trim, so it can easily be bumped out. So you have some big, thick trim going around mm -hmm. the building, which is really nice, but the corner boards are so skinny, it, it sort of makes the wall seem a little less substantial. So, yeah, good point. It's just big rounded though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's nice to have those bays coming off. It gives it some, you know, three dimensional. Yeah. And those are little porches with um, railings? Are, is that what it is? Uh, yeah, they're, they're exterior decks oh, nice. for each unit. So, I'm just curious. Oh, that's the whole, you have the whole port? That's the whole port? Oh, that's what I mean. Um, what do you do with your water from the roof? We currently the water from the roof is all being shed in one direction, and as we discussed in the site meeting, yeah. um, it's either going to be there will either be a gutter system or it's going to be sheet drained down to um, a gravel. Oh, okay. wow, that's a long drop. Yeah. It'll splash like crazy. Well, and that's partly, yeah, that's partly why we're thinking of doing the sheet flow because then we're more distributing yeah, it as opposed better. to directing it. Yeah. Um, and gravel so that any splash back is sort of minimized. So what does hit it is you know, the composite material and some of the concrete. What we're trying to do is obviously make sure that we don't push the water back into the foundation. Right. But we also have to be careful of the neighbor's property. So, so we if also you just took it off in the gutter and put it on the ground, then you wouldn't have to worry about it at all. Well, so well, other than where it come, where it drains to daylight. Um, so right now we're thinking. Um, you could tie it into the city stormwater system. Well, I guess, yeah, I guess that's a question we'd have to be sure of. Yeah. So right now we're trying to divert a lot of that water once it's filtered on site to any existing vegetation or proposed vegetation. So ideally, that's that's what would happen. It's just like, um, I'm sure the planning board did better, but once it drops down and splashes all over the place, it'll turn to ice. Mm -hmm. And then if it drains out into the driveway, it'll be ice. Yes. No, so it's definitely a consideration. Less because of any um, vehicles on this, particular, like, uh, on this particular piece of property, but the parking lot right behind, we don't want to negatively affect anything that's happening with our drainage on mm -hmm. that property. So that that's a good point that we really want to pay attention to. Are you yes. draining it to the north, the back? Yes. Okay. So that's the sorry. I always get messed up with my orientation. That's the side facing the State Street parking lot, right? Center Street. Center Street parking lot. Yeah. It's sort of draining oh. up. That there's gravel between the building it, and the other. It's called State Street, Street Fruit Store. So yeah. everybody yeah. refers to it as State, State Street. Street lot. Even it is. Oh, okay. Oh. Oh, okay. <laughs> even though it's not okay. So that's the north side of the building. And yes. If you ever walk through that little alleyway from mm -hmm. State Street, to, it's very cold and tight and tight. <laughs> um, I was just it's a lot easier to put it in the gutter and put it under the Not high. But I think it's a nice, nice addition to the town. Yes, sir. Hi, I'm Alex Kiesland, uh, 164 Riverside Drive in Bay State Village. And I have a couple of uh, points on um, uh, the concern. But the, um, on your plan, uh, the lot line between, I, I'm part owner of 7076 Masonic, which is in a butter. For people, that's the Red House. The Red House, right? Yes. And um, as shown here, the, um, the lot line, I think, is 
is wrong. I, it starts out right. Uh, there's no question about this pin, but it goes, uh, the way it's drawn uh, goes through the, an existing pear tree, sort of splits that. And in fact, uh, if you look back here, there's a pin, which I've always considered the back corner of my lot. <laughs> Oh, you know what? You don't have, you might have a site plan on 1.0, but he's got a set from the planning board meeting. Awesome. Yeah, so that, that one will work. Yep. So it gives you, a, in my mind, uh, not a really accurate view of the, of the lot. The, the pin is really about here. Which might not make sense. It's sort of uh, almost the uh, drip edge of the existing building, which is how those old buildings often were defined. This public walkway is my. Right. This is your property right, right. here, right? You're standing. Yeah. And that pin that you know is determined. I think it's here. I, this is. There's no pin here. There's a pin here. Right. And if you sight it along here, it really yeah. hits the. So the pin mm, is just about the step, that bottom step of the uh, fire escape, the wooden fire escape. And so you're saying so this plan shows the plot what? line going right through that tree. Right. You're saying that the tree is actually on, on our property. Real property. Right. I don't know if this helps your reference at all, but this is that existing stair. I don't know if that helps your, your reference right. point. Right. As far as where you think the um, I think that the pin is about here and it goes right sort of under the step. I think the pin mm -hmm. is right about here. Okay. The tree is. So this yeah. was based on an, uh, a civil engineer survey, but we would make sure that we staked this property out and surveyed it before yeah. you know, anything was done. Good, good question. For sure. Because Cause, even you just bringing that up means that obviously, you know, we need to clarify for sure. Yeah, I would change your setbacks. Yeah. Um, I really don't have, you know, uh, this, it, it's certainly changed a lot since we, uh, we started back there. Um, it's a it's an old building. I, you know, it has no historical significance, I suppose. Uh, Ansel Wright had those assembled probably in around 1820, uh, according to Allison Lockwood. Um, our building turned out to have beautiful early uh, 18th century framing, gunstock posts, all chestnut pinned. It's the only thing that really held that house together. And I'm assuming that that house somewhere under there probably has an old post and beam frame. They're really wonderful to work on. Uh, oh, Did we raise your building? Yes. Right. You raised that original structure and built underneath it? Right, you put a new first floor on it right. and made it a three-story building. Um, that said, really have uh, nothing. Again, you know, the water is a, is a big concern. There's a lot of water from all these buildings. Um, and we maintain that, that pathway all winter to me out there shoveling it and spreading salt and stuff so i don't want to make it any harder oh, the enjoyments of retirement what <laughs> the enjoyments of retirement <laughs> i haven't noticed that i was, was retired yet um i guess that's uh well there's two other things it's a Back there, it's, uh, there's very little elbow room. Everybody is, we're sharing space and it's very tight. Um, in order to, it, it's really crucial this line be out to pain because people back out of their, uh, pardon me, two under, in the building parking spots. And you can get out there on our, on our property, assuming it is our property, but it's tight. So if you park your car six or eight inches beyond that line, it makes it very hard to get out of the garage. So I guess um, the idea of tearing this uh, old building down uh, uh, back there is, and still maintaining uh, the, you know, our, our right of way through there, our access is gonna be difficult. It's gonna have heavy equipment in there, big trucks. Maybe it'll just implode it. Implode, but the, uh, Right, they did those big public housing with the dynamite uh, as well collapsed. Well, that's the second point. I, you know, our building had uh, didn't have much asbestos, but it certainly had lead, uh, lead paint. Um, 
we took our, you know, we, we peeled the siding down a board at a time. I think they made us, it ended up in the landfill, but you know, I think we made us wrap it in plastic. But here, with heavy equipment, you're gonna, I would assume that there's gonna be, you know, there's two, there's almost 200 years of dust and accumulated uh, whatever in that building that you're gonna throw into the air. And I don't live in that building now, but I know all the people who do. And so I don't know if there's any uh, city requirement for, for monitoring uh, air quality uh, to make the contractor. Uh, you know, I know they did that at the high school when they were renovating, but then there were kids in the building while they were working on it. So they were very. I think that would be a DEP thing. You'd have to probably check their regulations. I think it's also part of the building permit review for demolition. We have to show the plan for containing, containing the toxic the, uh, you know, oh, good. Yeah. Okay. I'm just curious, Carol, because this is the historic district, is there a demolition review of this? Has that been done? You guys are it? Yeah, we, that's so Central done. Business District, any demolition is under the jurisdiction of this committee. This is where we're missing out on Bruce not being here. But you're only, you, I mean, the rules are very clear. You can only approve it if there's an, a replacement building that adds essentially to the vitality of downtown. So you wouldn't be allowed to just approve a demolition and you know, walk away from the site other than for the church. <laughs> so I won't take up more of your time, but I have, you know, going to be watching this very carefully. Yes, so I hope it's time carefully. Yeah, for sure. Thank you. We should. Add, we do want this to add to the vitality of Northampton. I mean, Northampton is fantastic. You guys know this. You you live here, and it's a place that those of us who don't live here want to come. So we we don't by any means want to ruin or um, change that equation in a negative way. So by bringing some housing um, to that neighborhood, would we feel like would add to the vibrancy? We do want to incorporate, you know, the bike rack. We do want the neighborhood to be coming in and around and, and being part of this building and vice versa. So that is important to us. Any further public comment? Where are you from? <laughs> <laughs> Not so far away. The Berkshires. Oh, okay. <laughs> so maybe you come visit us sometimes too. Yeah, yeah I do. Okay, I'm gonna close the public comment then. Um, yeah, or if you, I mean, it depends if you want to make a motion to close if you have enough information. Otherwise, you might want to keep it open if you have some questions about if you feel like there needs to be any conditions or anything like that. You might want to leave it open just to get some feedback from the other. Well, from the app, I'm not sure, but I didn't know if we could get no more feedback from that. Oh, well, you can decide about that, but once you close, it closes for everybody. Oh, okay. Well, I have a question then about the. Uh, the plot, you know, the lot lines, uh, Alex is concerned. I mean, is there either through the planning department or the building department to those lines have to be determined prior to permitting? Well, so the way it works is the enemy needs to represent what the property boundaries are. It's under the, um, it's the burden of the applicant to present accurate information. Sometimes the building commissioner requires um, um, surveying stakes to be placed before the foundation is, and so they check that. In this situation, they may do that. The, I, I mean, in terms of your jurisdiction, I think if there were a concern that, you know, building or this design being too close to the property line would change that um, window ratio then they would obviously have to come back to you if those property lines changed or if they need to adjust something on the facade um, because of the property line changing. But other than that, um, I think um, they need to present accurate information and then the building department would determine whether it would be appropriate to have um, things staked. But if you have a stamp plan, if there's a stamp survey plan, we rely on that because this is this is um, it has the surveyors. So. Any other so I, I have yes. a question. I noticed on the um, thing that it said solar ready roof. Are you planning to put solar panels up there? Not immediately, 
but we are making sure that the roof structure is designed to take that additional load and so we are if, providing the conduit. So if if the new owners decided to put solar panels up there, would they have to come to us for a permit for that? Um, not if they're not visible or if you approve it now, you know, if there's a certain, if you want to say that the panels cannot exceed a certain profile or something like that, you can do that. Um, the planning board, I will say from a zoning perspective, we require all new buildings to be solar ready. Um, so um, they, they need to show that that's um, a possibility. What are the parapet heights off the roof? You know, mm -hmm. um, offhand. Um, I think okay. uh, on the front, the parapet. I'm gonna say probably under a foot, but towards the back, they are probably about three feet. So, given you know the the pitch of the roof, we, we wanted to make sure that when you say the front, you mean facing facing um, the right of way. Yes, yes. Facing, facing the um, the passageway. It's where it's at most shallow, and then going in the back towards the parking lot, uh, the, the, the deepest, but with the roof pitch, we wanted to make sure they were high enough so any future possible you know, solar panels would basically be hidden as much as, as possible. So if the roof is pitching towards the State Street Delhi parking lot, to the north. you have a parapet wall on that side? No. 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 The opposite side. I, I didn't see that detail. The opposite side. Oh, I see. Yeah. So, the, so there's no parapet facing State Street. Correct. You'll see the two ends, but it drops there. And if, if you were to put solar panels on that roof, you would likely have to pitch, pitch it them. opposite yeah. of the slope of the roof. Correct. So you would potentially have it those sticking up higher than the parapet more likely than that. yeah if we approach the entry side of the building yes as we got further up <coughs> they'd be pitched towards the um alley <coughs> correct that's the south side right yeah but they would be above the parapet you would see them the top end of the panel right because they'd be doing something like this you know, it's a funny detail because, you know, like if you look at a lot of the Main Street row buildings right on Main Street, those, you know, they all pitch to the rear and obviously there's no parapets on those rears and they drain off. But they don't, I don't know, in a wood frame structure like that, I don't know, frankly to me, and this is only personal, only one main person on the committee, but it kind of disturbs me. It looks incomplete that you just see the ends of those parapets. You know, the, the building that went in across the street that Peter um, Rottingham designed did a similar thing on that tower. And, you know, I, I admit I'm kind of fussy, but it looks like a cheap detail to me, you know? And uh, I, you know, I know it requires a different roof detail, but to continue that parapet along the State Street parking lot side and then provide some other drainage system, whether it's through the building in a roof train or even some scuppers that would lead to uh, an exterior drain pipe. I personally think would make that whole structure nicer. But again, it's, it's my aesthetics and this is the committee, so. Can you zoom in on that corner there? Yeah, they, the model doesn't have it. Maybe the, the elevation. We only have the yeah. like the cat one. Yeah. Well, that, yeah. Yeah, I guess. Okay. So again, it is a blending of sort of old and new languages, or different types of traditional languages, um, was sort of our justification for it. But again, you know, if if visually and aesthetically you you feel more comfortable with a parapet wall. It would be easy enough for us to incorporate, yeah, a scupper or some sort of gutter detail that, or at least allow the, the water to drain, but it would be sort of hidden. And yeah, and some of the scuppers you could then put in bounce, you know. Yes. Uh, yeah. And then divert that, like Tom said, to either, you know, city stormwater drainage or, or trees, some sort vegetation. of, you know, stormwater vegetation area. Mm -hmm. 
I had a down spot so that a vertical element. <laughs> <laughs> We're just killing all sorts of birds with one stone. And it would potentially shield PD panels. That's true. Because if you did put PD panels on it, you would be looking at the underside of them. From yeah. So, you so I think, yeah. um, from from our point of view, at least from my point of view, I should say, if there's no solar panels, the lack of a parapet back there isn't a big deal. But if there are solar panels, it, then it becomes a big deal because you can see the underside of the solar panels from states from Center Street actually, because it's it's high up and. Um, uh, It'll be an unattractive view. So I would, um, uh, it, and I'm, I'm inclined to put a condition in that if you are quite, that if there are going to be solar panels, that there has to be a matching parapet on that back, on that wall that faces State Street parking lot. You might want to put a condition regardless because it may not be during construction that the PV goes up, but it will be set up so that if the future owners in five or ten years, right, and then it would be harder to go back and put a pair. Well, we, we could so. we could word it in such a way that they would have to come back to us if. They or you could to just say put the parapet on during construction, right. and then they don't have to come right. back. So. And it impacts drainage. And Pardon? It'll impact the drainage, right. so it's better to do it all at once. Mm -hmm. And then just going back to the corner board detail that Tom mentioned, you know, I've done a lot of work on buildings in town here, and I don't recall ever using eight-inch corner boards. I think six inches is a very common corner board, and I don't know if it's just reflected in the drawings because of the scale, but and maybe because you have those very wide bands on the horizontal, mm -hmm. but. Is that true? I mean, almost categorically, a six-inch corner board I think is common. I rarely have seen a larger corner board. Oh, it's common because it's less expensive. What do you mean, period buildings? I'm saying, you know, Victorians yeah. and stuff. It's pretty. It was pretty standard. Yeah. But this, I think this is a more substantial three-story yeah. building. <laughs> <laughs> so would you want to see the car was in large size? I, I think I would like to see them a little bit larger because um, I, I think it would tie in with the porch columns as well. It um, adds some nice uh, vertical elements. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Especially when you're looking at that entry side and you can kind of see all those nice columns where the, the, the decks are and it would Balance that and frankly, the State Street parking lot side is the most noticeable elevation of that whole building. You know, if you do. I mean, Even though it's tucked away, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the other sides are, you know, the easement mm -hmm. side, the alley's so tight, you don't get a perspective on that building. Mm -hmm. You know, the rear is blocked by Alex's, and, you know, the, the side street side is behind Belly, you know, it's really close in there, but that. Uh -huh. North elevation is the most visually predominant one. Mm -hmm. So, um, forgive my ignorance, but when you say talk about the width of the corner boards, is that something? What are exactly are those? These are the, the corner boards here. Okay, that's what I thought. But I just wanted to be yeah. And we're just saying because the proportion of the um, horizontal elements mm -hmm. are so substantial the and this corner board is a similar width to the siding so you want to see it wider. just have a, a little more detail into it. Yeah. so would you need to see would you need to see a drawing of it or would you just need to know that the corner board was going to be wider than it is on this drawing well let's let's go Can through everything the that we've talked about and see if there are additional conditions and if we decide with those conditions, we want to have a board review or a chair review. Does that make sense? So, so let me, I'll just go through what I understand that the items are that people are, um, have concerns about or want resolution on. Um, we talked a little bit about the HVAC units and, and actually I would say any type of 
equipment on the roof would also include the solar panels. So since that's not clarified yet, um, there could be a condition that if uh, rooftop units are put on the roof, would would we want that to be reviewed? Yeah. 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 Because I think so. Oh, so maybe it depends on whether or not, not the parapet. If you're wrapping the parapet around the entire <coughs> roof, then you may be okay with just so long as the units don't exceed the top of that parapet. Mm -hmm. no. Yeah. Um. So I guess that it all ties into the parapet too on the north so side of the building. Whether exactly uh, the committee feels strongly that that should be continued around to the north side. Um, the eight-inch corner boards we just talked about, uh, the roof drainage, and uh, how that's achieved, and whether there would be any visual impact to the building if the drainage was different than the sheet flow that's currently. Um, shown or if a parapet is put in, um, how would that change the look of the building? Um, I guess if it's determined that the lot line is incorrect and that alters the facade of the building for whatever reason, then that would be something we probably want to review. Well, if we if we approve the project as presented, then that would if they had to change it because of the lot line, it wouldn't be as presented anymore and they'd have to come back to us. Okay. Um, so I think that covers everything. Is, is there, is the, the roof drainage, I mean, that's theor theoretically, it would be barely noticeable and you, it would be worked in with the parapet in some way that it would be barely noticeable, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would be either a downspot or an interior roof train. So I'm not sure we need to put that in the condition about the, I mean, they'll, they'll right. have to work right. it out for the right. sake of the building, but I don't think we care. Um, I'm sure that they will, they will put the downspots in an appropriate location. Yeah. Would also be on the rear of the building. Yes. Yeah. 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 Well, you know, I, I think, you know, that sheet drainage, or you call that, I think would be very problematic on that roof, considering it's the north side, mm -hmm. and it's very exposed, that building. Any <laughs> wind, I think, would blow any of that drainage against the building and you would wind up with like ice trees and all those windows. So that's a very good point because we're approaching it from a different perspective as far as what's existing. There's so much water that's coming off the existing roof and it's being concentrated amongst gutters and downspouts. So we're approaching it as, well, we're breaking up that concentration because now it gives the land the ability to absorb and filter. Um, but that brings up a very good point and that is not something we, we had thought of. Um, so it's a valid point for sure. No, I think if you had like two scuppers or like two downspouts on either mm -hmm. corner, I think you could carry that, you know, with a commercial size gutter or downspout. Yeah. I think you could carry I that water. I think we could get no creative problem. about not concentrating it so much, um, making it better than the existing, but also um, if we can't do the sheet flow. Because um, that's a great point. If it's windy, you're right. We, we don't want to ice this place in for any windows for any side. Um, is there anyone that, do we close now? We're ready yeah. to make a motion? Yep. Motion to close. Motion to close the open session. All in favor? Yeah. Um, is anyone ready to make a motion on yeah. whether there are some conditions on this? Yeah, I'll make a motion. Okay. I think we can pass, or we could put this up for vote with the conditions that the corner boards be increased to an eight inch corner board which is a seven and a quarter inch real dimension, um, and that the north side parapet be completed around, you know, the, the north parapet be completed around that side of the building, which would then create a condition of either scuppers or interior drainage for the building. Otherwise, I think I'd be okay with that. I would, I would add that if you decide to put something on the roof that it can't be visible from um, over the parapet. Even the PV panels, they might see a little bit above the top. Uh, the angle, I don't know if you'll be able to see them with the angle. Well, the solar it's such panels, a tall building. You know, the solar panels, I don't think so. I mean, they're not going to put them in anyway. So we can't really 
talk about them right now. But I, but it, but I, my concern is more if they put HVAC stuff on the roof. We want to make sure it's not visible from over the parapet. <coughs> Could you repeat that? <laughs> Just so, so it, it's written that better. Your eight-inch corner board and the parapet be carried around to the rear or the north side of the building. Um, well, I would also add that the parapet, the, the design of the parapet, would be similar to the um, rest of it. Oh, yeah. right. So it would just be wrapped around, yeah. Or yeah. continued around, and <clears throat> that um, any if any HVAC units are placed on the roof, that they not be visible above the parapet. Um, motion to approve. I'll second. All in favor? Right. I'd just like to say I think you did a really nice job of designing this. And particularly, it, it really, you know, the, the buildings that Sid Jolly owns back there are pretty peculiar. And this just kind of complements them in a nice way. Mm -hmm. I, I, I appreciate that. Definitely blended some elements together. <laughs> Thank you for your presentation, too. It was very well done. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Maybe I shouldn't have said Julia. I should have said I'm not going to do it. You did that, right? Yes, you did. That's all. That's true. We were just assisting him. Yeah. 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 You know what I didn't see? I didn't see any of the rest of the second year. It's a fully sprinkled It's going to be fully sprinkled. It's sprinkled. So you know. So I need a and the, the, the size, it's the size of the building that you are in now, that you're in three units. Oh, do you guys want to do a motion to adjourn? Are we, no other? No. no. Can I get a, a motion to close the meeting? Well, I guess if it can't make it back. Can you just make a motion? No, no. I can't make the motion. You'll make the motion to adjourn. I said.